you talk about as you're trying to future-proof your network for your clients, you're trying to get as close as you possibly can to your client. What does that mean in terms of your network architecture, and what are some of the key drivers by your customers to, 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 to need connectivity in new areas? Yeah, so, so interesting question, Jeff. And, and uh, you know, as I mentioned before, there, you know, scalability is a, a key issue for us, right? So as I think about our network and where we're going, we, we are thinking well beyond 2015 and what our customers need. And clearly, scalability is a key requirement. Today, we're talking about 100 gig interface and 100 gig technology. Tomorrow, it's 400 gig. So we're ensuring that our equipment that we select and we choose and we put into the network has a future-proof roadmap to get us there. Mm -hmm. From a geographic perspective, you know, we are keen on getting and expanding our network and getting closer to where our customers are going. There's a big demand recently, for example, particularly from some of the web-centric companies, mm -hmm. To, to expand north of the border mm -hmm. and, and really put their data centers in into Canada. You know, recent announcements from Microsoft and hosting their Azure platform up in Toronto and Quebec and, mm -hmm. and, and such. Um, and that's really important because you think about that and you know, that's, that's, there's, there's strategic reasons for them to do that, mm -hmm. but there's a big demand for now for them to connect those data centers onto their core network not just in North America, but into Europe, and that's where we fit and come in. So that's how we're thinking about that going forward. So when you go into a new city like a Quebec or a Toronto, uh, for the layperson who's not familiar with your business, how do you set up that network? What does it look like in terms of the physical presence you have in those markets? Yeah, I think the, the, you know, the first piece is really identifying those key markets. And once you've settled on that, it's really focusing on where are you know, the key points of presence and the key locations within that market. In many cases, it's it's you know data centers for you know for uh, single customers like that Microsoft examples. In some cases, it's carrier neutral hotels where there's multiple other ISPs mm -hmm. and service providers hosted there, and it's really picking the three, four, five, ten key points that are key to serving our customers and our demand customers, our demand set from our customers. Mm -hmm. And that's probably the first step in really electing you know, where, we, where we build out and then building that metro connectivity to ensure we've got redundancy and diversity within a metropolitan area uh, to, to, to support our customer needs. And then obviously linking that back to our core backbone mm -hmm. uh, to get them not just into North America but into other parts of the globe as well. So when you go into a market like a Toronto, mm -hmm. do you physically build a new metro fiber ring or do you lease capacity on somebody else's ring? We'll evaluate all options. So in some cases, we'll actually go build. In mm -hmm. other cases, we'll actually go uh, secure fiber from another provider. Uh, and in some cases, we may lease components of it. Uh, it's really a, you know, a, a trade-off on, on needs and, and a cost-benefit trade-off from our perspective. Mm -hmm. But we'll, we'll consider all options. Okay. And then when you go into market, you talk about those four or five key points that your customers need access to. Do you physically lease connectivity into all those yeah. uh, locations? Absolutely, yes. And then do you build one central head end that you connect back to your core network? We do, we do. We'll put a, a core pop in, a, or a core location head end in, in a particular market, uh, and then ensure we've got the, the connectivity to get us back onto our core backbone. And then in that head end, do you lease, because uh, you, cause you got to future proof your own network. You don't want to be Absolutely. ripping and replacing and, or moving that equipment. How do, you, how do you project how much room you're going to need at that, that head end location? Yeah, you know, we'll, that's a great question, and, and we're always thinking about the, the future. Mm -hmm. So you're right, we don't want to go in and, and be, you know, penny wise, pound foolish, as they say. You know, so we're really thinking about, you know, based on our experience and growth in other markets that are similar to where we're going into, you know, we'll think about and, and model it similarly to that. You know, we'll look at, you know, a three to five year window yeah. and, and think about, okay, what have we seen and what's our past experience tell us as we've entered into the new markets similar to what we're planning? And we'll use that as a basis to drive, okay, here's a plan that'll get us, you know, uh, you know cover our needs today, you know, 18 months down the road, 36 months down the road, and then a vision that gets us beyond that. Great. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks, Jeff.